Bless the Lord. God bless you. Word of which family? They're going to have to go off. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry, y'all. All right, let's try it again. Well, God bless you. Amen. Now put the glass so I can see you. I can't see y'all anyway. Bless the Lord. Anyway. Anyway, I'm a little confused today. Amen. Uh, it is what it is. We want to say welcome to uh, Word on Wednesday. Where we come and share the Word of God with you, and we thank you for uh, uh, tuning in. If you would, Facebook somebody, amen, give them a thumbs up, share right now, and tell everyone that we're on live right now. Amen, you ought to get a double header because Bishop just got off a little while ago, so now is, uh, it's uh, his sons in the faith time to do what we do. Let me just say this once again, amen, we realize that uh, we all have a desire to get out, and uh, the 4th of July ought to be an Independence Day that we do what we do, but nevertheless, uh, it seems like the fact that this COVID-19 has really uh, um, uh, just multiplied in a rapid way. And i um, not going to say I told you so or anything like that, but I am saying the fact that I know God didn't tell us to come back yet. And so you that were not sure and you wanted to do what other people were doing, um, uh, more power to you. But nevertheless, we're just trying to obey God. Well, we're thankful that they've allowed us to have a certain number of people uh, to be able to do that. They have not shut down the churches totally just yet, but restaurants and bars and all of those kind of places are, are being shut down once again. Now, let me show you, Burning Bush family. Uh, it's important that you be wise in this season. Be wise in this season. This is a reset that doesn't come every, it just doesn't come often. It hadn't been in my 60 years. And I'm just trying to tell you the fact that if you don't use wisdom at this time when this thing hits and, and uh, everybody needs money, you're going to have some. Hey Amen. So you that are in forbearance, uh, be wise. Uh, uh, you got this time, you should have paid some bills down by now. You've got rid of some stuff, got that thing down to 30 percent. Then at the same time, you should have been able to put that money away for forbearance. Now, some of you, uh, your companies have done more than just three months. My mortgage company, I have four of them, and uh, they've given three months. And if you want beyond that, then you have to request it. Well, let's understand how the math works. You got three months in forbearance where you are not utilizing your money, and you that are afraid that someone's going to take your stuff, they can't do that. That's called a forbearance. That same amount of money that you have ought to be inside your savings waiting to see what you want to do. So what I'm saying, at the end of this thing, everybody's not going to be wise because they don't have the Spirit of God in their life. And some people are going to be in trouble. And someone else's mistake will be your, your prosperity. That's just how life works. And it's not you taking advantage of somebody. It's somebody else that didn't take care of their business because they were not good stewards. So thank you, first of all, for your commitment to continue to give to the household of faith. Amen. As God is, just as God is strengthening your house, he's strengthening this house as well. And so we want to be able to do what God has called us to do and accomplish the mission that he set for us. Amen. So uh, once again, as in their stewardship, it's important that you be wise. Amen. And if you're taking three months forbearance, that's fine. If you take six months, that's fine. Here again, all that happens is they have to put that at the end of the loan, and then that puts you back in the driver's seat. I was sharing with one of our brothers in church, and he was a little leery about it, and I said, well, you wasted three months where you could have had money sitting in the bank, and that money is still sitting in somebody else's bank. So by putting that money in forbearance, and so you're putting it in the Penny Mac and Shell Corporation, all these other loans, that money is sitting in your bank. That makes your daily balance average that much better or greater. So uh, just want to, once again, um, uh, be wise. Uh, this is not a time to go shopping. Uh, I know that some of y'all just got the itch, and I know it is. And when you got money in your pocket, you just got the itch. 
But don't forget the fact, don't, don't take care of yourself and then miss God. Because if you take what God does and you do like Haggai and, and you spend all of your substance, whole nine yards, and leave God's house empty, uh, we'll be unto you. But you that are good stewards and you have been faithful to us and to the church body, we thank God for it. Amen. And uh, we're being good stewards to put things back in place as it should be. So uh, the COVID-19, and that's just forbearance about you being wisdom and stewardship. Now let me tell you about stewardship about your life. These crazy folks is talking about the don't wear a mask and, 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 and losing their constitutional right and, and God gave them the air to breathe and all that kind of carrying on. Don't uh, dismiss foolish people. Just dismiss foolish people, amen. When I hear crazy people like that, I just keep on strolling through my Facebook. Don't, don't, don't feed yourself with all this idiotic stuff that's going on right now. If you want this much time, you want to leave here and be closer to God, wiser, brighter, and yet stronger. And so uh, be careful, amen, for those people that uh, look like they just can't get it in Jesus' name. Well, uh, a lot of them that knew Jesus, they're in the grave right now, too. So uh, uh, be mindful where you are, but be cautious, and I think that's all I need to say about that. Amen. Thirdly, I think, let me say this. Thank you for the great time of celebration we had from my son Michael. Man, it was a nice affair. You were so kind and generous to him, amen, and we're thanking God for you, um, I'm saying, and he surely deserves it, amen. We came in today and uh, sat him down in the chair, and, uh, and eight of us had prayer with him before he took off today, and so he's headed out to uh, Long Beach tonight, and he leaves out tomorrow for Kansas City. Here I come. So we want to uh, uh, thank God for the gift that is among us, amen. So uh, I know that Sister Denson will be a little bit mourning and all that, but I'll be there to comfort her. I'll be there to comfort her. So I got, I got that taken care of. Amen. Amen. So she can cry on my shoulder, laugh, anything she wants to fall out, I got her. Amen. So uh, 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 it is. All right. Today's lesson, amen. Today's lesson is coming from uh, a very pa uh, a several passages of Scripture, but the, what I want to talk about today, how to stand against the spirit of strife. How do I stand against the spirit of strife? In this time of being fearless, I've been trying to make sure the fact that we give you a word that's fitting the situation and the circumstances, because those situations or those circumstances uh, are going to change. All right, Karen, get another outline and make the font bigger for my dad. Copy. All right. So anyway, um, 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 we want to uh, understand what's going on and how it's going on and, and all the battles. And right now, there's a strife all throughout uh, the whole world based on what's going on. Yeah. Of course, with this, new, with this presidency, there's a whole bunch of strife. All right? And that in that cell, because uh, we got one against, I mean, the guy was on the news the other day that had his M16 out or AK-14 or whatever it was. Uh, he, he has had his gun out protecting his house in his gated community and whole nine yards, and he was trying to justify strife, strife. Amen. There's, there's, it's a struggle. It's that invisible devil. Amen. Strife, you can be getting along with somebody and still got strife because of something that you have not addressed or something that you have not put in a place where you could actually get it. So look here. Strife is designed to destroy our lives, our relationships, even the church. Strife is designed to destroy our lives, our relationships, and even the church. When it uh, rises up against us and we do not have actively resist it, all right, it shuts down, all right? So we find ourselves, when we put ourselves in a place, all right, of strife, we put ourselves in a place that we are getting something like, it's kind of like I, 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 I got somebody I'm talking to, but I don't like them. And it's really, I don't like, it's not that I don't like them. I don't like what they did or what they're doing. And watch this. And because it has not been resolved, and because no one's saying anything about it, what does, at that point, it turns around and creates havoc or an indigestion. Let me try it this way. Uh, uh, have you ever had acid reflex? Turn me down just a little bit so I won't come back to myself, volume-wise. Amen. 
acid reflex. Amen. And uh, the older I get, the less I can eat my chili peppers. All right. So if you get that chili pepper that don't dissolve in the right place and you land down at night, man, that's a burn that's out this world. And, and you're trying to cough it out. You're trying to mm, hold nine yards. And, and if you ain't got no Tums, if you don't have something to be, get in there to coat that. And look, the Tums does not get rid of the actual pepper. It just coats it. It covers it. Some of the stuff that we're going through that we're striving and having strife among, we just ain't let God cover it yet. And because we've not let God cover it, amen, we find ourselves having the effects of these things. So we must not fail to stand up to strife. Or else blessings that God has in store for us will be what? They will be blocked. All right? If we don't turn around and get rid of this stuff, amen, and many people got stuff stored up in the layaway of glory, but can't get to it because of strife. And no matter what happens, no matter how much prosperity comes, no matter how much uh, good wealth comes, no matter how many babies you have, uh, it, it, it can just happen with strife. Strife between a mother and a father, a son and a daddy, sibling strife. There are people that's listening right now, and you uh, have not talked to your family in 30 years, all because of a strife. So therefore, it blocks us. The Spirit of God brings liberty, the Bible says. Amen. But the spirit of strife sows evil, all right, and lack of clarity. It shows what? Evil and what? Lack of clarity. When you are going through stuff, amen, and you're unresolved, whether in your house, in your marriage, with your children, amen, amen, it turns around and lacks clarity. Because then you tell yourself, I don't even know why you're tripping. I don't know why they mind not speak to them. Psst, holly, psst, how about that? Psst. Matter of fact, someone says their name, you go, psst. and everybody's like, what? Uh, you, don't, you don't know, but you really want to tell them. And somehow you find a way to let them know exactly how you felt or how you actually feel about that. As long as we continue talking about strife, we give it life. As long as we what? Continue to talk about strife, we do what? We give it life. If we continue, amen, all right, talking about what you don't like and who you don't like, it, it becomes pregnant. And it gives birth. And you thought you had a single and you got triplets and quadruplets and you don't know what you're giving birth to because of what? It just keeps on showing up. And eventually what happens is people around you, oh, watch this, y'all. In the midst of strife, you may still have it, but you give birth it to your children, and your children have the same strife that you have, like, disliking somebody not knowing why. This strife is going on with Black Lives Matter. It's a strife right now because someone does not want to be fair. No one wants to accept responsibility of what took place over 400 years ago. And therefore, the American Indian, they get a piece of land, and they got their own, plant, their own area. You stole the land from them, but then on us, amen, we still don't know if we should be able to vote or not. So the judgment of strife in America is now, in the midst of judgment, is at the foot of the White House. It's at the Senate. It's at the Congress. Because what's going on now is not about us. It's about in November who will be empowered. It's about who's going to get the next contract. Who's going to be the next billionaire? Yes, God. So we must know when and what words to speak. And when we keep it silent, strife provides the perfect opportunity for Satan to operate. When you do not say something about what's going on, you give Satan room to operate in. All right. And when you give the Satan room to operate in, what takes place is, amen, he just takes over. Because cause when, 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 when he said, what's your name? Legion. We're many. And you got to make sure the fact that that type of strife, that kind of hatred does not influence or take over your world. 
watch this, we must use our authority to fight the good fight of faith to defeat strife. I've been never really a fighter. I fight when I have to, but ain't nothing I just walk around here looking to do. I much rather talk my way out of that. Amen. Amen. I, uh, 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 my brother, he had another issue. And uh, he looked short at me, so he liked to fight. I mean, just give him a reason to fight. And so, therefore, because he would fight for me, I would cut up that much more because I know he'd protect me. Amen. Otherwise, I didn't take care of my issue. Amen. And some of you are fighting stuff now in your life and in your marriage and your families that you have not taken care of. I can tell you in 25 years of pastoring this church, how many people I've ministered to and I've seen strife go away and dissolve. And sometimes God will put the responsibility of the burden of the one that you have strife with to make you take care of them. And when that takes place, then, man, you'll start looking at things a little bit different, a little bit more clear, and you'll get some clarity because what? What you sow, you shall also reap. So we've got to find some kind of way to make sure the fact that we defeat strife. Don't let it get the best of it. Don't let the news media, don't let uh, CNN and Fox and all the rest of them get you to disliking something and don't know why you don't like it. Because strife is invisible devil that sneaks in your house and move in, amen, and will take, take camp from your living room to your bedroom. The next thing you know, you're at home fighting about something else and you don't even know what the issue is. Uh, we're saying black lives matter, and I know they do. And everybody trying to say all lives matter, and, and I got that too. Amen. But the idea of the fact that uh, what's been done to black folks ain't been done to everybody else. And so the statement, but then here again, it took a pandemic, it took a storm, it took a George Floyd for some of us just to go back and read on what black life matter. Because we were so accustomed to strife that we became content with it and we didn't investigate and find out what black lives matter about what. We didn't know what their stand was and you can sit there and be innocent like you want to, amen, but I didn't either. I didn't need no commentary on Black Lives Matter. The subject by itself speaks for itself. But if I'm going to fight for blacks, I better have some content of why I fight. I have the content why I say what I say and I preach what I preach. That's where it comes in when you have not did your due diligence. And then that strife is because your cousin got strife. You don't like red because whatever. It's invisible. And if you're not careful, if you're not, if you're not very careful, man, you'll be fighting a fight that you don't even know why you're fighting it. And that's a sad commentary all by itself. Let's get with it. A, strife is present when our spirits do not line up with God's spirit. So where strife shows up. Life is present. Strife is present when our spirits do not line up with God's spirit. You will always have strife and you'll always have tension when your what? Life does not line up with God's spirit. Otherwise, the, Jesus said every time he spoke, he said, I and my father are one. He spoke of the unity and there's no division among them. And so what happens is you've got to understand the fact it presents our, uh, our strife is present when our spirit do not lie. Otherwise, you can get out of God's will. And when you're out of God's will, God does not kick you out the family. You just got some issues going on. Got it? Otherwise, I, I can't put a handle on it because, what, you don't want to handle it. Mm-hmm. Here it is. For, the Bible says here, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. The Bible says in James 3.16, a man said, where every uh, strife is, there's evil, what, for every good work. So therefore, if I'm going to deal with this, all right, watch this, find out what's happening in my own family. Where there is envying and strife is, wherever it moved in, wherever it lives, all right, there's confusion, all right, and what? Every evil work. Otherwise, while you get mad about something, don't know why you're mad about it, won't tell nobody why you're mad about it, how do people know you're mad about it? And we let all of this stuff build up. Amen. I talked about a couple of weeks ago, there's a silent frustration. Yeah. Silent frustration is when two people will be married, amen, in the same house, and they're both intellectual, but they're too stubborn to apologize. 
Let me try another way. Amen. They, 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 they have both got the same issue, but they're too stupid to apologize. So what happens is they just pass each other in the wind because they still got to flush the toilet. They still got to take out the trash. They still got to go to the same refrigerator. They still got to use the same water. They still got to control the same thermostat. And so what happens is we just say nothing and do just enough to satisfy, but nothing to repent. So that's what strife does. It causes us to be in a place where we will not reconcile things. That's why they call divorce a reconcilable difference, irreconcilable difference. Otherwise, we could have, but we chose not to. We couldn't see eye to eye. We couldn't get along. We couldn't get past it. And how many marriages are destroyed because of every evil work? A. When strife is, when, where strife is, confusion will be. Strife keeps us from knowing for sure what course of action to take. And it prevents sound decision making. When there's strife, here it is on your Jumatron, he says that it will also be strife keeps us from what? Knowing for sure what course of action to take. He says when we get all messed up, amen, it prevents us from making sound decisions. And many of us cannot move forward in our prosperity, in our relationship, because we won't make sound decisions because of strife. There's a struggle. Invisible tug of war. One pulling one side to the other. Amen. And we just, if anybody, we just, we just exist, if you will. So therefore, B. Envy is the result of refusing to trust God. And it leads to strife. When you are in a place, husband, listen to me at your house, your wife wants to serve God, but you choose not. So you allow her to go to church, but she comes home and got to catch your hell. Strife. All right? So therefore, no one can really make a sound decision. Amen. I made the decision, but I have paid consequences for the decision because I know I'm right about God. Let me try another way. You want to tithe, but she don't. Or she wants to tithe and you don't. Strife. And you're trying to find out how come we can't get ahead? Why are we on this treadmill? How come we keep going in the same spot and we don't go any further? Why? Because both of you go in two different directions. And that allows you to stay in the same spot. That's why one person can't save but then the other spend all the money. And then this time right now, all right, you ought to be clearing up a whole bunch of strife. But you ain't got no place to go but so get it right. Amen. It leads us right. All right. See, when we feel envy leading us to strife, into strife, we must consider our ways. All right. Instead of grumbling when others are blessed, we can rejoice with them. Now, y'all know what Haggai said. He says that, look, he said, y'all got holes in your pocket. Amen. He said, he said you got holes. When you feel like envy, look, look. He said, it ain't working because you ain't doing right. You go back and read Haggai, read at verse 1 through 5. We preached about it a couple of days ago. He said, y'all got them nice houses and <coughs> y'all got them nice cars and y'all got nice panel in today's language. Y'all got all them iPhones and iPads. He said, my house stays in ruins. And many of us, amen, are trying to find a way. How do we get ahead? Amen. I'm telling you right now, God, lead. thank you, Lord. Amen. Whenever you get an increase, don't, put a, don't forget, forget to put a seed in the ground. Whenever increase comes, you have to put seed in the ground. Amen. Number one, you're God of tithe. Let's not even talk about that. But there, you ought to turn around and bless somebody. Put seed in the ground to help someone else get out of what they're coming into. Even in the field of the day, amen, amen, Boaz, all that was going on, amen, she tilled the corner of the field. They left the corner of the field for the poor. Don't you get your prosperity and don't bless nobody else. Don't you get your prosperity and don't make somebody else's life better. Because if you're going to be selfish with what God giving you, then guess what's all you're going to have. And you won't be satisfied with what you have and you'll keep on going until you spend all that you've had. And you'll have all of this stuff but no happiness. Mm. D. Oh, God, yeah. A humble person submits to God's, to God's will. A prideful person will not submit. A person that's humble, he does what? Amen. He submits to God's will. Now watch this. He don't just submit to God. You submit to God because you ain't got no choice. He submits to God's will. 
Submitting to God, amen. Look, you're going to wake up. You ain't got no choice. You're going to submit to God's, that, 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 but to God's will. Otherwise, what do you do when you get up? What do you say when you grow up? What do you say when you build yourself up? So you get the place, you get the place that you, get, uh, that you understand. In fact, look, a humble person. A humble person is a person that's not trying to look for his own identity. A humble person is a person that's not trying to get all the glory. A humble person is not trying to be seen. He says, so therefore, when we do it, we submit to God's will. For a humble person is what? All right. He submits to God's will. A private person will not submit at all. Otherwise, some of the stuff that you don't do and you won't do is because of your pride. Had nothing to do about how much money you make. Your pride won't let you do it. E, causing all your care, cast all your care upon him, for he cares. First Peter 5 says he did. You ought to cast all your care upon him because what? He cares for what? You. God cares for you, so therefore you ought to cast all of your cares, all of your concern on him because he cares for you. Otherwise, it's, it's my job to uh, take all of Lori's worries and carry them. All of her dependence ought to be on me as a man of the house to do what I need to do to protect and to serve. All that kind of good stuff. So therefore, and uh, when she hears stuff in late at night, I'll tell her, did you hear that? Nope. Tell me, I know you heard that. Tell me, you're not going to go see what it is? Nope. As long as don't come in this room, tick tock. But because of, she cares, I'm not going to sleep with her worry. So I have to get up, go out there and make some noise and hit some stuff. Look like I went all the way to the other end of the house because I care for her. <laughs> Aren't you glad God don't go halfway like me? God cares for you and he gives all the way and meets all of your needs regardless of what you're going through. Yeah. Caring for, caring our cares indicates we are too proud to submit to his word. When you try to do this thing yourself, you're too proud to submit the fact that you can't do it. It's nothing worse than a man trying to put something together. We know you ain't going to read no instructions. And after you read all the instructions, whole nine yards, and you got some extra screws and some extra gadgets, and you tell your wife, she said, what's these for? Oh, they always give you extra. <laughs> they don't give you no extra. You just didn't use everything because you didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> Caring our cares indicates that we're too proud to submit to his word. And sometimes we're too proud to submit to his word because his word, we don't agree with it. I don't want to forgive you. I want to be mad at you. Why? Because I'm God. I've just decided that you need to be punished. And so therefore, the best way to punish you is for me not to speak to you and not say nothing because I want you to feel like I feel. What if God made us feel uh, like he feels? Look what God carries for us. Look what God does for us, amen, in the midst of what we do. Oh, thank God that he doesn't turn around and try to make us feel like, or oh, in revenge otherwise, and lack of short, better words, amen. Here we go. Strife is vigorous or bitter conflict. Competitive jealousy. Rivalry or the state of being in discord and then ties a not antagonistic towards someone. The tendency to quarrel is based in strife. Otherwise, when I see you, I'm about to get mad. Matter of fact, just knowing, look, I was fine until I found out you was coming to the party. And matter of fact, I had planned on going before I found out you were going. And now that I find out that you are going, amen, maybe I ain't going no more. Now you got sick. Now you don't feel good. Now I got an upset stomach. Now I got a headache. <laughs> hey, why? Because what? Is strife is vigorous or bitter conflict? And some of you have life lessons right now with your loved one. You got a bitter conflict with your sister. You got a bitter conflict with your loved one, <clears throat> with your brother. 
or you got a bitter conflict with your parents and you don't know what to do or how to do it, I'm trying to tell you what, God don't want you to have that strife. Don't mess around and die. Nobody come to your funeral because you had aggravated strife here. Rivalry, jealousy, competitiveness. And there are times that we have that in our family and con competition is good, but it all not cause strife. My brother was a better person in sports than I was. Amen. I was good at what I did, but he was just more disciplined than me because I wanted to be able to do the sports and have fun. He just wanted to win. That created strife. Amen. Because <laughs> he wanted to go further. And I'm like, enough is enough. Amen. So therefore, someone tends to H. Where the Spirit of the God is, there's liberty. One translation where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty, the second father. He said, but the spirit of strife brings confusion. Otherwise, have you ever been somewhere and then you were safe but you felt free? That's liberty. Right now, amen. I don't like the idea of being in COVID, amen, but I'm free right now. I'm sitting here watching God do his perfect work. I'm watching God's hand move. I'm studying stuff I didn't have to study before. I'm looking at things I didn't look at for, and I'm examining myself. Don't you come out of this quarantine and waste this pandemic, and you've not been made the better? Because something you should do that you did not do before, and there's something you don't do that you shouldn't have did, like vice versa. Some stuff ought to come to a halt because you got time to examine yourself. And many of you, listen to me right here. The problem with some of y'all, amen, is y'all don't want to listen. You listen to people you want to listen to, but won't listen to very people that love you. I got one question. Why should I lie to you if I love you? Matter of fact, if you can't trust me to give you the better, then you ought to get rid of me. Or I ought to get rid of you. Because it's time to evaluate where we are and not have the same old challenges, amen. And if you're, if you're a married couple, amen, look, this is the best time. Listen to me. Hear me. I'm trying to talk to a couple I'm counseling right now, amen. And they were reading a book and they read two different books. I don't know. Don't read two different books. Read the same book. Uh, don't his and hers. You ain't ready for that. His, look, his book and her book, that's for mature people. But when you're foolish, y'all need to read the same thing and see if y'all got the same revelation. Now, just imagine this, right? If you got rid of the strife right now and you went and got a married book while you're in quarantine and read one chapter a week and then work on just that one chapter, you could come out here and have a better marriage, a stronger relationship, amen, and you can grow and get rid of this strife. But when you will not hear truth, we will not listen to righteousness, amen, because you want your own ideas because of the fact that you're stubborn and the devil's having toy with you. Hmm. Ah, yeah, God. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So the, the question is, where's the Lord in your life? How much liberty do you really have? Because really what you're finding out right now is that you're locked up. And some of you are locked in a room with open doors. You're stuck in the same room and the door is not locked. You're just scared to walk out because you're so used to strife. And you're so used to less. You don't understand God's best. Two. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham, cattle of the herdmen, and Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Pezzarites and all the Hizzites and all of the fights, <laughs> right, dwelled in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be what? Let there be no strife, I pray thee. He didn't just say let there be no strife. He said, I prayed about it. I know you and I ain't spoken a long time. But I'm coming to you now. Let, let's get rid of this. I, I, I know that you still ain't brought back my car yet, but, but okay. You know that you stole my weave? Okay. All right. And you know I was trying to cook and, and you still ain't brought back my pie pan back? Okay, okay. He said, let there be no strife among us. Let's settle this. Let's put it in a place that we can all can deal with this and we can all enjoy what God has for us. All right. He goes on. Let, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and between my herdmen and what? Thy herdmen. For we are what? For we're brethren. He said we're family. So if we're family, then why are we tripping? We're we family. Go look, look, right now you ain't got nothing but family. 
You got to have family you trust or someone that you treat like family. Can't even, somebody can't, can't even visit you right now. Mm-hmm. Bless the Lord. So Abraham and Lot was going through this challenge, amen, and, and, and he had the wisdom of God. He said, let there be no strife. Now watch this. Listen to me. Look up real close. You're at home. If you want to get rid of strife, you're going to have to give up something. If strife is going to get out of your relationship, out of your life, you're going to have to let something go. You got to be able to go and let there be no strife among us. Amen. It is what it is. Now, I got, I got people that owe me. Man, oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, no, I said it. Then you know who it is. All right. So, um, I got people that are going through different things, amen, and that I had to just let go. And here it is 14 years later, God just answered my prayer. So out of what was done, amen, I'm talking about over $100,000 of money. And God had to replenish it now 14 years later. But he would have never replenished that money had I kept on to the strife. I still let them conduct business in my church. I still let this happen. I, I did not speak evil. I spoke truth. But I wasn't condemning and con tearing each other down. Talking about, no, no, no. That, 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 that. That's when strife got you. Strife don't get to control me. And here we are in a time of pandemic. God sends a message and God sends a word and sends deliverance. Amen. And now let there be no strife among you. Get, get, the sooner you let it go, the sooner God will deal with it. The sooner God will deal with it. I don't have no, have to sneak up on nobody. Can I get a witness? Let there be no what? Strife among us. A, strife hinders our progress and puts our lives on hold. Strife will lock you in a room of craziness, and you don't even know how to get out. You won't know where the door is because all the walls are padded. All right? So, therefore, you bouncing this wall with the same old stuff, hey, amen, and anybody else moved on, has already gone moved forward. So I got to find some kind of way to make sure the fact that not get the best strife hinders our progress and puts us our lives on hold. B, there was an opportunity for a strife between Abraham and Lot, but Abraham knew how to how what how deadly it is. Abraham diffused the potential of strife, thereby allowing God's blessing to operate in his life. If you want to get rid of other people, if you want to get rid of problems, then you got to let God. Have Operate in your life. You, can, you have to get a look at it. You'll never be a giver if you're worried about what people are going to do with it. Let me try it more again. Amen. You will never be a giver, amen, a sufficient giver, a prosperous giver, a joyous giver, amen, as long as you worry about what other people. Because if you worry about people going to do with it, then you shouldn't have gave it up. So, therefore, I have to get rid of it. So, so, Abraham had a problem with his nephew, and he was the big man. And he said, look, here, let there be no strife among us. Here, look out. Look at the land. You choose one you want. And Lot chose the one with green pastures. He said, where you go, and I'll go the other way. And he turned around and ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because grass always looks greener when you ain't got to cut it. Let me try it again. The grass always looks greener when you don't have to cut it. Roses are beautiful as long as you ain't got to pick them. So he turns around he said, and they began to operate. Why? Because Abraham was operating in the blessing of God and not about what he saw. Most of us got striped by what we saw, not because of what we know or about what we saw. What we see and not because of what we know. Your eyes can get you in a whole bunch of trouble. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, B, all right? Yeah. Three. Thou also hast delivered me from the striving of my people. Thou hast kept me to be the head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall what? Serve me. He said, look, he said, he said I'm going to spot right. He said, thou hast also delivered me from the striving of my people. Otherwise, I've been blessed. He said, I, 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 I'm doing pretty good. He said, thou hast kept me to what? Kept me to the head of what? The heathen. Otherwise, God, is, God will put you, look, 
my fact, let me try another script. The Bible says in the book of Acts that by showing love on your enemy, it's like heaping coals of fire on his head. What he's saying right here is that, look, at, I, look I'm in good. But I got another insight on this thing, amen. No need both of us being confused because I go to bed free every night. I don't have to have no mercy, forgiveness, and all that. I ain't got no list of people I got to get right before I go to sleep. I just go to sleep. You know, because I've not let them get in my head. Quit letting people get in your head and in your heart and confuse about what you ought to be and how you ought to be. And love people the way God told you to love them and keep things in perspective. He said, I knew not... Uh, 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 and, and the people which I knew not shall serve me. Otherwise, God has some people that's going to give you favor. If you get rid of strife, amen, and quit letting your life be controlled by emotions, God got help for you. Oh, my God. Amen. You look, look, when I'm talking about checks in the mail, I'm talking about some real checks now. Amen. Favor is going to come on our lives. Amen. He said, it is what entirely possible to be delivered from strife. This is God's will for us. It is what entirely possible. When I say entirely possible, it's, 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 it's possible. I mean, I'm a witness. And guess what? When you get in God and God's in you and you start thinking of saying kind of way, guess what? All you can do is become disappointed. But disappointment doesn't bring strife because you had disappointment with your kids, but you still keep them. Amen. I'm my, I'm sure my father disappointed me a whole bunch of times. Can I get a witness? Amen. And guess what? I was disappointed him a whole bunch of times. But we didn't let no strife come in the middle of us. Amen. And out of all that I did that I should have got a whooping for, whoo, Lord Jesus, I found out how merciful he really was. Because I saw my kid do the same thing. And I had to be merciful and make sure there was no strife. For what's a man so if? That shall he also what? Reap. Amen. So there is possible to be delivered from that. Four. Hatred stirreth up strife. Here it comes, y'all. Hatred stirreth up strifes. But love covereth all sins. If, look here. Has anybody pushed you to get mad? Oh, come on. It stirred up strife. My back, there's some people know you don't like certain people and they bring them up on purpose. Come on now. <laughs> they know you can't stand it. Well, invite you to the party and say, hey, guess who's coming? <laughs> Stir up strife. Amen. But love covers all sins. Otherwise, you ought to have enough love that when it's stirred up, it does not change who you are. When it comes around, it should not dictate how you operate. Uh, yes, God. Next. We can make our own decisions about whether we shall what? Whether we will allow strife in our lives or deliberately allow love to cover what? All our sins. Otherwise, we can make a decision by ourselves whether or not we're going to let it go or we're going to move forward. But you got to make your own decision. I've decided to follow Jesus. There's a lot of stuff that uh, uh, gets the best of me, amen, but I've decided. I cannot pastor 700 people without having strife going in my life. Because people will text you some of the crazy stuff. And people will ask you some of the crazy stuff. And they'll quit on you at the craziest times. And if you have not resolved within yourself that you have the spirit of God, these folks will make you mad. But when your heart's right toward God. I used to wonder as a young preacher, how did the pastor know all the words and how to have all the answers. And I've learned over now, 40 years of preaching and 35 years of pastoring, he don't know everything. He just knows him. And because you know him, he braces you for the abrasiveness. He braces you for the hurt. He braces you for the anguish and the letdown and the talked about and to be manipulated he builds you for it. Now I get it. Watch this, y'all. I understand even more so now that every time they try to get Jesus in a fix, he said, I am my father one. 
He said, I just say what my father says. I do what my father does. I go with my father. He's, whenever he got in, watch this, come here. When you get in trouble with other folks, ask yourself, are you doing what Jesus did? And he and the father said, they're one. He said, I say what my father says. I pray what my father, I do what my father, what I see him do, I do. What I, he says, I said, that's how you get past strife. You won't get past it when you're looking at folks and you think the fact that you have the upper hand on them or they owe you something. Well, you owe them something too. Mercy, kindness, and forgiveness. That's what you owe. My Lord, yes. B, strife is associated with others' negative emotions. It needs to what? Be banished. When I have this strife, it's associated with, watch this. You don't like your son. You don't like your daughter. Well, let me try. You don't like your son-in-law. Or you don't like your daughter-in-law. Because we end up not liking other folks, but we ain't got to be married to them. My father used to make this saying on it. If I like it, you ought to love it. Didn't make sense when I was a kid, but now I'm older. If he like it, I ought to love it. He's really saying that you ought to be happy for me. Because I didn't marry him for you. They're not my friends because of you. They're my friends because of me. So if you like it, I ought to love it. And you are sitting here trying to get those uh, uh, having new son-in-laws and new daughter-in-laws, amen, and because you don't like their mama at the wedding because she didn't bring her, 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 her best whatever, let that stuff go. And my daddy says, I like it. You ought to love it. He wasn't saying you got to like it. He said you ought to love what I like. You ought to love that I made the choice that fits me. Quit letting other folks control how you operate. Yeah, golly. You can't choose nobody else's wife. Can't choose nobody else's husband. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Watch this. Only by pride cometh contention. But with the well advised is wisdom. If you keep dealing with that same situation... And keep treating that person wrong, amen, you're never going to operate in wisdom. So therefore, you got to find something to what? Get over yourself. Because somehow you think the fact that you are God and you are the judge and you're the one that decides what's good and what's bad. I'm not married to my daughter's husband. She is. I'm not married to my son's wife. He is. And if you turn around and try to make it be something that you need, you're trying to control the situation because of your arrogance. And I got one question. When did God give you his reins? When did God tell you that you get to judge somebody else with your crazy self? And what have you done, amen, to glorify God and speak into the life of My son-in-law, Stacy, he come from a different family. It took me a minute. Their family value was a little bit different from ours. And it took me a minute. But you know what? Besides, because it took me a minute, I stayed out of it. That's Inez's choice. And guess what? Over the years, now, this, son, this young man has become a good son, and he's growing in grace and growing in kindness, growing in mercy. Amen. Why? Because I never judged. Ain't nobody good enough for my daughter. Trust me. Am I trying to help somebody? Am I the only one up in here? I'm saying, on your best day, you flunking. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about real fathers now. Yeah. Amen. Because if you look at it wrong, I'm going to have a problem. Yeah. But if they like it, you'll love it. Yeah. And if you let the love of God in. My father wasn't saying that through, out of Proverbs. He's saying that out of experience. That if you love what they love, then you'll be okay. Because I'm okay. And so I don't choose my children's uh, mates and friends whole nine yards. I give them advice and keep on pushing. Because I'm married to Lori. It takes me 25 years just to get cooking, so I, can't, I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> Hello, get up. <laughs> Strife. Oh, God. 
All right, next. All right, you know, I get to talking. I figure where I'm at. All right. Hey. Pride, pr- hey. Pride and contention are linked. Contention is marked by strife, debate, dispute, controversy, or striving in what? Rivalry. There can be what? No contention without pride. My God. Man, I'm, I, I, I know you're at home, but I'm all in your Kool-Aid right now. I'm, I'm feeling tropical punch right now. Or a grape with lemon in it. I don't know which one it is. And if I, you go, right now, you're going to need another cup of sugar in yours. Because this ain't tasting as sweet as you thought it was going to be. Because God's speaking to you about your pride. You ain't got pride because you walk with your head up. You ain't got pride because of the fact that you get up and run five miles. That ain't, no, no. Your pride is your contentious, contentious spirit that you have. And never having anything good to say. Can't anything good come out of your mouth? That's what they were saying. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because I got one question. Can anything good? Watch this. What if you went home, picked up the phone, and called somebody that you had strife with and told them that you love them in Jesus' name? And I'm working on the other part. Because sometimes I got to love you in Jesus' name because I ain't got to you just yet. Because you kind of hard to swallow. But it's my job to show you the love of Jesus Christ. It's my job to show you the goodness of God. It's my job to embrace you. It's my job to bless you. And if you're not consistent with that, then you go back to the first page and I'll tell you where the devil is at. He's in your mouth and he's in your spirit. B, pride causes us to insist on doing things our way instead of God's way. Somehow, you older, so that make you better. No, that might just make you dumb because you don't have the same experience other people have. Now, when I got married again, I had to find somebody that had a degree. So I had to find somebody that was smart. So I had to find someone that's going to help me get where I need to be. So therefore, how can you help somebody else if you don't have anything to help them with? So in our business arrangement, our marriage, our, our contract, I take care of the, uh, uh, the weedier things, or the things that are going to take some, 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 some uh, hustle with. Yeah, yeah. Lord, give me the hustle and I give her the education stuff. I don't know what my insurance says because I ain't reading it. I don't know what it takes to get all that. I don't know what. I just get, look, I get my medical card when Lori give it to me. I go to the doctor when she tell me to go to the doctor. Because I ain't reading all that. I married her to get her help me. Now watch this. Why should I get someone to marry someone that's with a master's degree and smart and then act like I know more than her? That's just dumb. My God, that's dumb as hell. I mean, like, yeah. That don't even make sense. Can I get a witness? Someone got more experience than something. That's like, you don't have a house and you're trying to tell me how to buy one. You rent a, a duplex apartment or in the sky, whatever. It is. You don't own no car. And then you're going to tell me how to buy one? I need somebody to not buy one car. That's about several cars. And I need someone that at least one. And guess what? I need this too. I need someone that lost one. Because I know, I, I know you feel when you hide your car at night on the next block and you live two blocks over. Called Repo Man. Now, if you want to how to get past all that stuff, come talk to your bro. <laughs> Holler back at your boy. Amen? If you want to know what it is to be hurt by divorce, holler at your boy. But in the midst of what I had gone through and the hurt that I've gone through, I was able to deliver Lori so she wouldn't have to be haphazard about all of that stuff. And now we're working on 25 years. Hallelujah. And I got food. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs says, there's a way that, and then some translators say, there's a way of destruction. There's a way that seems right. Oh, watch this, you at home. <laughs> what you do seems right. 
but the end is death. Now, I looked at this thing when I was studying. I said, well, Lord, if it's about death, then is it that they're going to die? No. There's no life in what you do. There's no peace in what you do. Because you can be operating in spiritual death and still moving. This is not physical death. This is emotional death. This stuff that make you cry. This stuff that make you aggravated and person ain't even in the room. I don't know anybody that get out of my skin like that. He says, he said, the end thereof, the ways of death, otherwise, it will not profit the way you operate. Hear me good. It will not profit the way you're operating. And most people, watch this, y'all family, if you're coming real close. Some of us in our families are dysfunctional because we try to act like we don't have a family. Can I tell you, everybody in your family ain't going to be straight? And you might as well get used to it because you go into a family union and there's some people that you're like, Lord have mercy. You don't leave your purse sitting around. <laughs> And so on and what so on. Watch this too. A wrathful man, all right, stirs up strife. But he that is slow to anger appeases strife. Otherwise, he that's slow to anger, they ain't getting mad and talking about somebody. Oh, they ain't this and they ain't that. And they ain't never did that whole nine yards. Nah, you just, you got issues your own self. Amen. I, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, Stacy, uh, um, thought that because when he married my daughter that you know because of how tight me and my daughter that uh, I'd probably be over all the time I got a house I ain't married you I married Lori and because as a husband and as a father amen as a pastor I respected yeah, my son-in-law's household and how he ran his house and not try to make it right my house guess what there's no strife Whenever there's strife between he and I, we straighten it out. We deal with that strife. Because when you're saved, you ought to be able to deal with that. You ought to be able to tell somebody, I don't like you. It's not that I don't like you, I just don't like what you do. Well, then tell me what don't you like and what can I do different because I ain't going to stop being black. Don't get mad at me telling me, you know, you're just too black for me. I can't help that. I don't even know how to act like skinned Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> so how do I get rid of the strife? I got to deal with it. I got to face it. You've had three months at home to call somebody and apologize, and you ain't done it yet. But you waste your conversation and your minutes on your phone talking to somebody else about them when you ought to be talking to them about that. Man, those songs said, let's straighten it out. Let's straighten it out. So appease the strife. Strife shows up in people who cannot control their anger. Strife shows up in people that can't control anger. Guess what? Anger is not you going down there blowing up the, a building. But you're blowing up your spirit. But guess what? No one walks in a room and makes me angry. I don't know anybody that I can see and they just, for lack of a word, just piss me off. I don't let that get to me. That's too much control for you. And while you sit here thinking you're controlling somebody else, they're controlling you. Because when I know you don't like me, I'm going to do stuff that you do not like. Because you the foo-foo. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Godly. So you got to make sure the fact other people don't control your environment. I don't let Lori uh, Ways control my environment. I don't let you as members control my environment. Because I'm a happy guy. And I refuse to let people just, I don't mess around with folks that are going to drag me down. Can I get a witness? Hey Amen. My back, you ain't worth me. If you boring, you ain't worth me come to your house. I'm going to need to have some freedom. Amen. And you controlling, don't worry about me come to your house. got white carpet and you want everybody to take their shoe what the what you get white carpet for on the floor 
And y'all know, <laughs> it's kind of like, everybody, when you grew up, you had a living room. How many had a living room? With that plastic stuff on the front of it. Man, I couldn't understand it. Get out of that living room. What was so... And, 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 and I don't know about y'all, but we had, we had the crushed velvet furniture. The gold wood, kind of like whole nine yards. Like, like you just like lay on it a whole nine yards, slide around. <laughs> but my grandma had this stuff with plastic on it. And you had to go ahead and just look at that. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. You're going to get a bubble up you get in the living room. Boy, you better go outside and play, get my living room. All right. <laughs> and now, nobody want to... Everybody know ain't want a living room. We got that furniture sitting in there. I go and sit on mine just because it's mine. <laughs> Are you going to be here? I was in there one day and uh, uh, I had my feet all kicked up on the whole nine yards. And Lori looked at me like she was my mama one day. <laughs> and, and, and last night I was, I was after work whole nine yards and because all the, all the nail shops are closed up. And I had my feet up on the couch. I was holding nine yards. I'm just sitting there watching TV all the kind of recuperating yesterday, holding nine yards. So Lori got ready to sit down. Hey, Amen. It had little flakes all down there. What say? <laughs> Talk about, them your feet? Talk about, I'm not going to eat right here like you're going to jump up in her, in her food or something like that. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't buy this stuff to protect it. I'm just protecting my soul. Forget about this couch and all that. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm just trying to tell you. People be caring more about stuff than they care about people. Forget, tell me, worry about that couch. What about my comfort? I'll buy you another couch. All right, bless God. All right. <laughs> and then, this is free, y'all. This guy was sharing. And, and, and the, and the uh, uh, nail shops opened up, holding out yards. And she was talking about her feet holding out yards. And she was, I don't know about you, girl. I already got my pedicure. <laughs> I went and got my nails did and everything did. Hold on. I felt, I felt human, man, three months, man. I got, my feet look like cow, look like elephant's tusks. And then, yeah, there's going to be some flakes on that couch. All right, bless God. Had nothing to do with my lesson. I just thought I'd share with y'all because I have no pride. Okay, all right. Let's get to a few more because I'm not going to rush through this. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll make it. Yeah, well, okay, watch this. All right, where am I at, y'all? Because I be. Angry is an expression of fear and the result of what? The failure to deal with it. When you're always mad, it's because you refuse to deal with it. Now, I'm trying to tell you, I'm a pretty honest dude, man. Don't ask me no truth if you don't want it. Can I get a witness? I will tell you the truth whole night. And I've learned how to curtail it until you're ready for it, but some folks never get ready. And I'm always ready to tell you the truth, but you just keep dodging. Can I get a witness? Now, uh, I share people when I say, when you can't speak to your wife or whatever, you just write a letter and uh, say how you feel. Uh, when they get, get it, I write the letter three times. First time I write it, and I'm telling you off, and it's David Jr. talking to you. I read it again, all right, it might be your husband talking to you. Then I write it a third time and put some scripture with it, then that's the preacher talking to you. I want to give you the first two drafts. <laughs> but the Lord won't allow me to do that. And then so when I give Lori the third draft, she tomorrow, I don't see much God in this one anyway. <laughs> I said me and my father won. So my point here is, everybody, you can turn around and kill yourself just by trying to do stuff the wrong way. Can I get a witness? Amen. So therefore, go. Next one. See, the number one fear is that God's promises will not come to pass in their lives. A true understanding of grace eliminates fear. God, I love that right there. A true understanding. Watch this, everybody. A true understanding. When I understand that grace looks beyond my fault and sees my need, when I know that grace takes care of me even though I'm a sinner, I don't care if it's drinking, I don't care if it's smoking, I don't care if it's crack, I don't care if it's adultery, I don't care if it's, it's killing. Grace goes beyond that. So the number of fear is that promises will God will what not come to pass to end their lives. A true understanding of grace eliminate. Otherwise, when you are afraid, of what people may do to you and what people may say to you, you don't know what the grace of God can do. 
Because trust me, <laughs> if God touches your life to speak to somebody, God's prepared them already. Now, if God ain't told you to say nothing, then you ain't prepared. And you're going to get the wrath of that person. But when you went to somebody and you prayed about that, and you're not just yesterday, oh, you, we spoke today and the Lord told me to see you. No, no, no. It may take a month. It may take two months. It may take three months. But the grace is on your life to baby, you didn't do that. But if you turn around and go speak to them and say, you know what? I got art against you. And I've had art for a long time. And I want to just tell you right now, first of all, I'm sorry for not coming to you. But now that I'm coming to you, let me just get this off my chest and I'll be done with it. If we friends afterwards, so be it. You got to be honest with people. You got to be transparent with people. What makes my ministry effective across the board is my transparency. Now, now most people say I'm crazy as I'll get up because I say what nobody else is saying, all that kind of care on, but it's transparency. I don't go to bed wondering, I wish I would have told y'all something. I, I leave here wish I had more time to tell you some stuff. But I don't be like, ooh, I wish I could have told them. No, I'm going to tell you. Amen. And, and you probably will not come back. And that's okay. Because that means that I'm not for you. And I'm just passing some of y'all till your pastor show up. And when he comes, go get him. And then obey him and hear him when you wouldn't hear me. Just hear him. Make sense? Next one. That's kind of light. All right, thank you. He loveth what? He loveth transgressions that loveth strife. And he that exalted his gate seeketh what? Destruction. Proverbs say, he that loveth transgression that loveth strife. Otherwise, if you like being in trouble, if you like controversy, man, you just like strife. Now, some folks just mean is H E hockey sticks. And the, no matter what you're going to do until they get saved and their soul gets saved, they're not going to change. Quit, quit trying to make a, 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 a rhinoceros out of a billy goat. They're different. They're made different. So therefore, what's the saying? Seek a destruction. Proverbs gives, gives idea what it is. Look, whoever loves strife is bound to transgress. Next we say, whoever loves strife is what? Bound to transgress. Strife produces transgression. Now, can I tell you right now? If you've been mad all this time and you're still talking about somebody and you not love them like they should, you're a transgression. If you still got somebody you can't stand and you not speak good about them, amen, and love them as the Christ loved the church, you got transgressions. And because of your transgression, nothing's going to come your way. You're going to always be frustrated. I tell you what now, you are not going to be at your house enjoying life and I'm frustrated thinking about you. When I go to December, when I get ready to go to the house, hey amen, I hit them rocks, I drop y'all off. The Bible says, hit the rock of ages, I give them to you. Amen. So therefore, I don't take all your stuff to my house. My wife want to come home and sometimes talk about stuff like that. And I love y'all, I love Jesus too. But I ain't finna talk about church all day in my house. This is the vocation that I'm called to. And I ain't got no problem with what I've been called to do. But I'm not going to sit there and discuss your stuff at my house. Ain't going to happen. We might mention you about five minutes, we go on. But we ain't finna have no dialogue. We can watch Friends. And go somewhere everybody knows our name. <laughs> Next, daughter, come on. Four, right? Cast out what? He says, cast out the scorner. And contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He said, if you get rid of it, <laughs> it'll cease. If you get rid of contention, if you get rid of the anger, you get rid of the frustration, you might like that person. The thing is, you never gave them a chance because your strife wouldn't let you get close to them. Your strife wouldn't let you forgive. Can I go this further for y'all folks that marry folks and that your children get married and then you think you're supposed to be married to them? Ain't none of your business. What, what, what Stacy and I never do ain't none of my business. What Joshua and, and Candace does ain't none of my business. It's my business when they ask me and invite me in. And then I ought to have a word from God, not a word from my heart. 
because my heart is going to side with my child. But the God's going to serve with his soul. And maybe you got strife, amen, and it's against you because, in fact, you ain't let it go. Hmm, golly. Yes. A, where am I now? Yeah. So we do not have, what? A, we do not have to be, what? In the presence of scorners who try to disgrace us. And we do not have to be, what? Have to tolerate negatively. Look, look, remove yourself. Don't join the negativity. Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? And I'm scared right now. Look, when we talk about our children and they going through some stuff since they've been married, Josh and my, uh, uh, got 15 years or something like that. And I don't know, something like that. And they, uh, Ned and Ned's got five or eight. Whatever. When we talk about our kids and they, who they're connected to, we're trying to find a resolve. Scripturally. Giving them verses. And many of you don't give no verses because you don't read the word. You just go to church and hang out. And you know when to shout. And you know when to dance. And you know when to speak and put your spiritual hat on. Deep down you're a heathen. And your soul is not saved. And I know your soul is not saved because you ain't said nothing good about nobody. It's always negative. Then who the, now who the devil? If I get up in front of every Sunday morning and speak to you all the time about a certain person, that person ain't got the problem. You got the problem. Somebody shout, let it go. Watch this. I, I will. Jesus refuses to tolerate scorners when he brought a what? A dead girl back to life. Otherwise, those people that did not believe, he said, look, I don't have time to go to scripture. You read it and get home. Amen. Oh, there's some stuff you got you to bring back to life. How long are you going to be old and stupid? And cray cray, if you will. Because after 50, you're supposed to know better. And getting to 50 was hard enough as it is. But you ain't, you ought to be, look, 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 you ought not be sliding down into the mud. I know you ain't got many days left, but you got, that's the days you got left. You ought to make it right. Yes, we messed up in our early years, but what you going to do to make it right? When are they going to see Jesus in your life? Five, finally. An angry man stirreth up strife. And a furious man aboundeth in trans transgression. Look, it's like this, everybody. An angry man stirreth up strife. And a fierce man aboundeth in transgression. Here's the best analogy I can do it without preaching long. It's like getting on the diving board, jumping in a pool of water or a pool of shiza. I'm not getting no amen from the TV, so let me see. Uh, let me get. Yeah. So y'all wouldn't know what shiza is, amen. Let me, let me, let me, let me. That's German. I told you I'm bilingual. So let me say it again so you get this. An angry man stirs up strife. And a furious man abounded in transgression. He jumps into manure. And then get mad because he stinks. How do you walk in Shiza and get mad because you stink? Yes, you stink in the nostrils of God because you're not forgiving, you're not loving, and you're not kind. But everybody's supposed to like you. Mm. Abounded in transgression. Otherwise, man, there's all kinds of stuff against you. You got a rap sheet. When they pull you over, oh, Lord, all guns are drawn. Because your rap sheet says that you're dangerous. Your rap sheet says you're carrying a weapon called bitterness. Your, 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 your rap sheet says you got a knife of hatred. So when the devil comes in, amen, and God pull you over, he's pulling you to the side and got guns drawn because what, you got too much stuff on your rap sheet. 
Too many people you've hurt. Too many people you misused. Too many people you don't like. And ain't nobody great but your kids. It might be your kids, sorry. But you won't say nothing about that part. Can I get a witness? Because if a man ain't taking care of a woman, guess what? Who's sorry? Ain't the woman. If a man cannot do anything, a man can't bring nobody home, a man, and have a great household, it ain't the man's problem. You got to own your stuff. And the problem is, your right guard has gone left. And like Jesus said, well, lad, he's thinking about now. Some of your stuff been stinking for a long time. And you covered today because we got a mask. I don't know if this is the cover of you from getting on me or me getting on you. Mm. Lastly, strife, everybody. We can be angry without being caught up in strife. The Bible says, my brother and my sister, be angry and sin not. God ain't got a problem about you being angry. God ain't got a problem about you not liking it. God got a problem about you sinning about it. God got a problem with you not making it better. And guess what? You'll not be old and have enemies. Because the older you get, the more friends you're going to need. Trust me. I'm just trying to make sure I get some help along the way. I don't need my kids and I don't need nobody misusing me when I get old. Can I get a witness? I'm trying to treat folks right. Amen. And uh, Pastor said, me, said, man, when I get to passing this church, I just want to go somewhere and just lay down. Not me. God might grant you that. And then when I have my funeral, they ain't got to do nothing. Just, just, just burn me up and no. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. I want a whole bunch of people here crying. I want a whole bunch of folks sucking up around here. I want to see, I want to look up and say, you ain't crying enough. Go back down. Because you know how much I put up with you. You know how much of your kids cost me? <laughs> but when you're free, and he that the son man said, free is free indeed. So if you're free, why are you locked up? Why are you upset? And guess what? If you ain't got good, nothing good to say about nobody, the old saying say, shut up. Don't say nothing. Now, there are some situations. I ain't got nothing to say. You know what I say? Well, bless the Lord. Can I get it? Because I really want to bless the Lord because if I say what I'm going to say, you ain't going to like that part. So let's just move on. Amen. And God will speak to you when I say bless the Lord because I didn't say what I wanted to say. This word strife, we'll probably hit this couple weeks because uh, it's, it's shame for us to be in isolation and still miserable. You at home thinking about somebody else? Oh, my God. Look, I, I, don't, I ain't at home thinking about Nez, Josh, Stevie, none of them. I think about when they call and when I'm praying for them. But I ain't wondering, I wonder what Josh doing right now. I can care less. I'm just glad I'm doing what I'm doing. And so, therefore, watch this. Don't let your children put you in strife. They're not going to make the same decision that you made, and they're going to make choices that we don't understand nowadays. But you get older, you ought to get wiser and not dumber. You ought to be wiser, amen, and not more foolish. So now you ought to get yourself in place the fact that, you know what, that's my son's choice, that's my daughter's choice, and God did not tell me to tell them what to be. God told me to love them. Am yeah, I going to make sense to everybody? And don't you let other people turn you against what's yours because they got opinion. Because those are just like, everybody got one. Let me try another word. Those are like imaginations. Everybody got one. We ain't out of word. We're just out of time. Bless you. But God bless you. Amen. Right where you sit, right where you stand. Amen. Grab your phone. Amen. Grab your tablet. Amen. And it's time for our tithes and offering. Amen. It is the first Sunday. You don't have to wait till Sunday nowadays to tithe. You get the tithe when you get it. Amen. 
And so therefore, uh, if you've not joined us in this time of giving, all right, uh, we thank God for all those that helped First Fruit. We did, we did a great job. Thank you for those that shared with Michael, amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteous. And the Bible says all other things shall be added unto you. So therefore, if that's you today, your time to give, amen, then go ahead and do that. And not, we will actually be here on Sunday morning, amen, from 8 to about 12 o'clock. You can drop your tithes off and uh, come by and do it inside the lobby. We just can't have so many people. You understand the rules. If you come to the church, you have to have a mask, amen, and we're not open for the public just yet, but if you come by, we're not going to run you off, amen. We just want to make sure you're social distancing, so we want to take care of that. So don't forget your tithes and offering, amen. Let's get ready to give God. Now, uh, as you share, uh, it happens. It's just natural. When you bless somebody else, you don't shortchange God. So just because you gave Michael something, don't shortchange God tomorrow on this Sunday or today to do what is right. So therefore... Uh, the giving is on the screen for you to give, amen, do that, and uh, consider being a consistent giver, amen, on a rotating basis. It just makes it easier for us. But you, we've done a great job in their stewardship, and I am so proud of you all, amen, because we are surely a misery rides on the tide, amen, and God has blessed us tremendously to do that. So if you're guests that you want to give, we receive that. We're good ground, and thank you so much. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we thank you right now that we pray that someone heard this word today, that they looked at their lives, God. They got rid of their anxiety. They got rid of their stress, dear Father God, their anger, their strife, dear God. And they realized that that they've sinned against you. And that stirs up bountifully, God, transgressions. Remove the transgression right now, God. Touch their lives and let them know they don't have to live in agony and fear and hatred and bitterness. Let them know that, God, they can live abundant life and enjoy their life. And, God, you'll bless their days as they move forward. Now, God, if they don't know you're a free partner of their sins, God, we pray they look at the screen. They give their life to you, God, and they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you as Lord and Savior of their life. Save them like you saved me, God. Save them like you saved so many others, dear God, that you reached out, picked us up, turned us around. Put our feet on solid ground. Thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, now bless us. Dear God, we leave this place whenever you're part. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look this way. Let me bless you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and never shine upon your life. May the Lord bless you when you rise up early and when you settle late at night. May God bless you in your labor and your leisure, your fears, and yes, even your tears until that day. That we sit at the feet of Jesus and there be no sunrise nor sunset. May the Lord God bless you, my friends. And may the Lord God bless you and bless you with good is my prayer. Don't forget this Sunday we will have communion. So be ready to do it at your home with you. Amen. Or stop by the church and pick up your cups. Amen. Before Thursday at 2 o'clock. And we'll have communion on Sunday morning. God bless you. Good night.